Greetings, fellow mathematicians. In this video, we're going to go through a summary of the four important types of integrals that you need to know how to evaluate to be successful with partial fraction decompositions. So the four integrals are the following. We have basically one over a linear expression. We have one over a power of a linear expression. Typically, the powers will be small, second power, third power, maybe a fifth power if your professor is a real jerk. That's going to be brutal. And then we have these quadratic denominators. And those are going to require some special formulas and another technique from algebra called completing the square. Now, before we get to these four integrals, it might be helpful just to recall the four cases that you'll learn about for a partial fraction decomposition. Your denominators could involve distinct linear factors. That's the easiest case. Repeated linear factors. Next, distinct irreducible quadratic factors. And recall that irreducible, that's the word we use in mathematics to mean unfactorable. And then the worst case of all, repeated irreducible quadratic factors. So in this video, we'll go through evaluating each of these four integrals. And let's get started with the first one. For our first integral, we can tackle this with a basic u substitution. If you're comfortable, you can also make use of what we used in a previous video called the 1 over a shortcut. But let's go through it with a full u substitution. We're going to choose u as the denominator. So u is ax plus b. We calculate the differential. We're missing a factor of a, so we can convert, bring the a to the other side as 1 over a. And now if we convert from x's to u's, we have a 1 over a factor, and then the integral here that converts to 1 over u. So we get 1 over a times 1 over u. And from there, we can recognize the basic antiderivative for 1 over u as natural log of u. And as always, substitute back u as ax plus b, and we get our antiderivative. All right, that is our first of the four standard integrals. For our second integral, we can evaluate this also using a u substitution. Instead of doing this with a general power n in the denominator, let's make it a small power. Let's go with one that you'll typically encounter. So let's say the value of n is 2 and evaluate this integral using our u substitution. Same u substitution, u, we'll choose it as ax plus b. Same differential. And same trick of dividing the a over to get 1 over a du equals dx. And we also convert it, but now we get 1 over u squared du. Now this one we can evaluate it easily with the power rule if we rewrite this. Rewrite this integral as 1 over a times u to the negative 2. And from here it should be very straightforward to integrate it using the power rule. We're going to add 1 to that exponent and then divide by the new power. So we should get 1 over a. And then your antiderivative here, add 1 to that power, you'll get u to the negative 1. And then we divide by the new power, we're dividing by negative 1, we just get an extra negative there. I always like to convert my negative exponents back to fractions. And we can back substitute our u as our substitution. And 
and we get our antiderivative for this second type of integral for partial fraction decompositions. For our third important integral, this comes down to memorizing a formula. Now I hate to tell that to my students, just memorize a formula, but memorizing this integration formula will be the key to allowing you to be successful and quickly go through partial fraction decomposition questions. Now let's go back earlier in the calc sequence to see where this formula comes from. Typically, you might have a number there in that denominator, but the basic one starts with one. So this integral might look familiar, the integral of one over x squared plus one. And you probably recognize that as having the antiderivative of inverse tangent. And you might also write that and see it as written as arctangent of x. Now, a lot of the times in partial fraction decomposition questions, the number in the denominator there is not one, it might be another number like 16, 9, 25. It might not even be a perfect square at all. Either way, the formula we're about to state will make quick work of one of these integrals. The formula that you need to know comes out to a one over a factor times inverse tangent of x over a. Now there is a u substitution involved to go from this integral to that antiderivative, but you won't be expected to use that substitution or prove this formula. You just need to memorize it to make use of it for a partial fraction decomposition. Now let's just put that to use. Let's make that kind of the worst possible case where that number isn't a perfect square. So let's say as our example, we'll go with one over x squared plus five. And what we want to do to make use of this formula is make the number in that denominator there, we want to represent it as something squared. Now five's not a perfect square, but we can cheat. We can think of five as square root of five squared. So here, we're gonna identify the value of a in this formula. Five, we're gonna think of it as square root of five squared. This part inside, that's gonna tell us our a. So we're gonna use a as square root of five. We just need to plug this into our integration formula and we'll very quickly get that antiderivative. We get a one over square root of five factor and then times inverse tangent of x over square root of five. And that is our third way to evaluate an important integral, which comes down to knowing this formula. Our fourth and final important integral is very similar to the third one, but the difference is there's an x in the denominator. Now, if there is no x, in other words, it's an x squared and a constant, we can apply this inverse tangent integration formula, no problem but we have a factor of x. Now let's turn this into a specific problem. So let's just have values here for b and c. Let's say as our example, we have the integral of one over x squared minus four x plus eight. Now this is typically going to be encountered in the irreducible factor case. So this denominator is not gonna factor. So what we do to make use of this formula, and it looks similar but without the x in the middle, is we go through completing the square. Now there's a number of ways to implement completing the square. Here's the way I like to teach my students. Let's take this denominator, x squared minus four x 
plus eight. And if you think of your coefficients in a typical quadratic expression, something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, the procedure I like is to take your b coefficient, which is here, negative four, and we're gonna add and subtract b over two squared. And part of the expression will then factor as a perfect square. So let's go ahead and do that here. We have x squared minus 4x. We're going to add and subtract the same number. So we're really adding 0, which is totally allowed. So what is this value that we're going to add and subtract? Well, we take b, which is here, negative 4. We're going to divide that by 2. So we get negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So we're going to add and subtract 4. So add 4, subtract 4, but don't want to get, forget about the plus 8. And what you should find is that these three terms in the front factor as a perfect square. And it looks like we can write that as x minus 2 squared. And then the remaining numbers, we just combine them. Uh, geez, that's a little complicated. I think we get positive 4. And from here, it looks very similar to our inverse tangent integration formula. Now, let's just make use of that. So all we've done so far is we've rewritten our denominator in this form of completing the square. So our denominator will replace it as is. And you might be able to do this without a substitution, but let me go through a substitution. I want to convert this to make it look exactly like that, where we have a variable squared plus a number squared. So I'll choose u as x minus 2. du is then dx. And this will convert to the integral of 1 over u squared plus 4. And now we can make use of our inverse tangent integration formula. Since it now fits that pattern, we have a variable squared and then a number. So here in that formula, we're going to be using a as 2. Since 4 is 2 squared. So from here, we can plug everything in. We get 1 over a inverse tangent of u divided by a. And the only thing we would need to do is back substitute our u as x minus 2. And we get our antiderivative 1 half inverse tangent of x minus 2 over 2 plus c. All right, this is encountered enough through partial fraction decomposition that you should be aware of it, but most likely your irreducible quadratic factors will likely come down to just applying this integration formula. This was our fourth and final integral. Again, make sure you're comfortable with all four types of integrals so that way you can quickly go through partial fraction decomposition. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to like and subscribe to support the channel.